In our last video, we talked about how to calculate diluted earnings per share by using the treasury stock method. And in this video, I just want to focus on the shortcut that can be used to really quickly calculate a diluted earnings per share this way. So let's take our example from the previous video. You start a taxi service with a Ferrari. You've got net income of 120000 preferred dividends of zero, and then you have a weighted average shares outstanding during the period of 30000 Okay. So we have 5,000 options that are outstanding. They have an exercise price of $12 a share. So investors can buy 5,000 shares in our company and pay $12 each for those shares. All right. So now our market price of the shares right now happens to be $15. So there's a really simple formula that we can use to, to calculate our diluted earnings per share. So, so this formula right here is going to tell us actually not the diluted earnings per share, but the change in the denominator that's going to happen. Remember we talked about what our basic earnings per share, we've got in the numerator net income minus preferred dividends, and then in the denominator the weighted average uh, number of shares outstanding. And so we're going to have a change, we're going to have an addition to this denominator, and the amount that we add to the denominator is going to be the number that we get from this equation right here. So let's calculate it out. In this example, we've got $15 market price minus a $12 option price. Here's the $12 option price. Here's the $15 market price. And then we divide that by the market price, which is 15. And then we multiply that. See, we multiply that by the number of options. We have 5,000 options. So we multiply that by 5,000. And this is going to equal this whole thing right here. I ran out of space for my equal sign. That is going to equal... 1,000. So what does that mean? Well, if we return to our equation here, that means that we're going to add 1,000. We're going to add 1,000 to the denominator. We're not going to do anything to the numerator. It's not necessary. So we're going to add 1,000 to the denominator. So now let's calculate what the diluted earnings per share would be. We've got 120,000 net income minus zero for preferred dividends. And then in the denominator, we have the 30,000 weighted average the common share is outstanding, but then we add in the 1,000 right here, right? So we're adding that. That's what the, the effect here is the, of the diluted earnings per share, the people we assume convert. And we assume they converted as of January 1st of the year. And assuming that, we have diluted earnings per share of $3.87.